are back with the Behind What's the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. What's up? I'm DJ Keo. That is what's up. We are about to get into things. I want to get mm-hmm. to this article that you sent me about these festivals. Mm-hmm. And um, and these now, again, these festivals are specifically in the UK only, right? Yeah, yeah. This is just right. about the UK. It's not about the rest of the world. Don't, right. Everybody's watching this at home. Don't get excited yet. This is right. not for you. You know, because, <laughs> you know, people need to remember that, you know, Brexit means that obviously the UK is totally separate. It's not, it's not part of the EU anymore. So they're yeah, creating yeah. their own laws and everything else. So this, this is very interesting. Um, and the other thing is this, this may be able to work in a UK because I read something mm-hmm. where they were saying that the UK has like really amped up on the vaccines and it's mm-hmm. conceivable that the entire population could be completely vaccinated with both doses, with both mm-hmm. shots, within two or three months. So yeah, it's totally it, possible. I think it helps that it helps that they're an island and they're kind of isolated there that way. Because mm-hmm. uh, you know, North America is a lot harder because we we have a landmass connected <laughs> right. to other countries, mm-hmm. and so we we don't really have control over who can slide over our borders that much. Right. Uh, we try and we say we do, but we don't. <laughs> we we don't. You know, and the other thing about this article is they not only talk about festivals and mm-hmm. they also talk about clubs. They call it um the nighttime industry, not the nightlife industry, right? It's like yeah, the nighttime yeah. <laughs> industry is like, okay, right. But um, you know, they they you know, some of these festival owners they were saying mm-hmm. that, yes, we can do this in a safe manner with social distancing. I don't know how you can put a festival on in the middle mm-hmm. of lockdown and do social distancing. I mean, how, how how can you do that? I mean, do you think there's a way forward in terms of that? Well, they've, um, there's been a study in Germany. I wish I, I had it to give it to you. There's a study in Germany where they did a concert about a thousand people and they discovered that they were, it was safe enough in is indoors Mm -hmm. as long as there's ventilation and that kind of thing. So outdoors, it should be kind of better, but this is, this is the argument that the study made. And I I can't, I don't have any verification or validity until whether the study worked or whatever, but the argument they were making is it, it was in a building and it was properly ventilated and people were wearing masks, and so they were able to get through a thousand guests, or you know, <laughs> guinea pigs, if you will. But yeah. <laughs> they're able to test them, and uh, they didn't have any outbreaks from that. So that's their. I think this is what the UK thing is looking at here. They're looking at the. They've done a couple studies here and there, and it seems to be if uh, you know it's it's well ventilated. That seems to be the thing that they cure all for how they're looking at it right now. So I think they're assuming that if it's outdoors, it'll be automatically well ventilated. So there's no reason why you couldn't kind of do something outdoors. But, you know, we'll see. It's it's way too early to tell. Right. I mean, if you're talking about indoors and it's like well ventilated, right? I mean, mm-hmm. what if you're, I mean, you're dancing, right? And well, I mean, you have people thing. around you and people were sneezing and, you know, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> You know, people are breathing and, you know, it's again, you're in the culture, you're dancing and doing Mm -hmm. everything else. I mean, I don't see with, I mean, you can have (laughs) any type of ventilation, um, the best Mm -hmm. there is. But when you're in those clubs and it's packed and, you know, the music is dope and everyone is having a good time. Yeah. I mean, the, the indoor thing and even the outdoor thing, you're still close to people, right? You may be near people you don't even know Mm -hmm. and they're talking stuff is spraying you know you got particles all over um i don't so would you feel would you feel more comfortable if everybody had the mask on or you you know there's a zero policy about this don't you dare take it down everyone's got a mask on and they you know a little space between each other would you feel more comfortable no i mean (laughs) (laughs) okay here's the thing right um 
and I understand the economics of it. You know, you have to yeah, yeah. really take into account that these are people who have businesses. Some of these are small businesses, even though some of these mm-hmm. festivals are like, you know, a quarter of a billion dollars, a half a billion dollar, like sort of industries, right? Um, yeah. These companies anyway. But no, I would not feel safe on any level going to a club, mm-hmm. going to a festival outdoors, going to a restaurant right now in DC, <laughs> it is restaurant week. Imagine that. Yeah. Right. And you know, I was on Capitol Hill, like, uh, you know, over the weekend and mm-hmm. I was just driving down one of the main roads near the barracks, the, uh, the Marine barracks. And I'm just like, these restaurants had like these plastic glasses. I mean, these, these plastic mm-hmm. homes, a plastic mm-hmm. house in front of their restaurant so that four or five people can go in and sit down and, you know, go to a restaurant, you know, and you, you're in this yeah, plastic yeah. bubble. I even saw like some festivals where people are sort of in these round sort of circular bubbles. And I guess yeah, it's just I did friends, a, you know, you saw that, right? Yeah, I did. I did a video about it. It's the Flaming Lips did a concert in, in the bubble thing. Yeah. And I guess that was successful, but you know, you can only put so many people in the bubble. So uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know how cost effective it was or how, how much money they could make back from that. Right. But like people so, were anti to get outside. Right. And so uh, I, I, I take your point about, you know, how, you know, it's a business and they're going to have to figure out a way to go forward because I don't, another year on the lockdown and I don't think there will be a business to come back to. Yeah. So like they gotta they gotta figure something out. They like, whether they do the quick testing or they you know something. They gotta figure something out. So um, yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't have I, that's the thing. I always make clear I don't have the answers. Mm-hmm. I read what I read on the internet and you know I do some research. And I talk to nurses and doctors, but I don't have the answers. So I would never mm-hmm. pick a side and be like this is wrong or you should do this. Like I'll never do that. Yeah, but you know to answer your question, no. I am not going to a club. I am not going to a restaurant. I am not going to a festival. I mean, to go to a festival, like even um, they had these, Mm -hmm. I saw this news like uh, item, you know, months ago when the pandemic was, when the lockdown was really just early on Mm -hmm. and um, these sort of bars and everything like in Ocean City on a beach, they were closed and they were like, well, hey, we can create these. So basically they were like these huge truck um, inner tube tire, mm-hmm. you know, inner tubes blown up yeah. and they had wheels, right? So mm-hmm. a person would be in the middle of it and they can just walk around inside of this like inner tube, this huge truck mm-hmm. inner tube and, you know, basically bouncing around, bouncing into other people. And it's just like, <laughs> how dumb is that? Right. Yeah, like, is it that serious that you need to go out, that you need to go to a restaurant, go into some mm-hmm. like secluded bubble and have, mm-hmm. you know, drinks and, you know, eat out and everything. Have someone serving you food through like a plastic window. Is it mm-hmm. that serious? I mean, I understand that people are just like cooped up. They want to get out. Yeah, and it's crazy. But all of these sort of things that businesses or thinking about and trying to do is to me, it's just a waste of time and it's just really goofy too. You know, again, I understand that mm-hmm. you have a business and you need to make money and everything else, but just the things you're trying to do to make that happen, knowing that you're still only going to maybe reap 10 to 25% of what you're losing. Right. Yeah, you're not even you're not breaking even at all. You're not Based breaking on the even people, at all. I think the only people who've been doing okay is grocery stores, to be honest. That's it. Grocery and, stores. And maybe some Walmarts with the grocery stores in them. You know, the superstore Walmarts, they're probably doing okay, but yeah. everybody else is hurting right now. Yeah. It's and not so, you know, the, the the question comes down to well, <laughs> well, how long can you go like this? And you know, everyone's trying to come up with some kind of crazy solution. We did the bubble thing, you know. People did the <laughs> the concert where there was like in the box. Did you see that? That their people were standing in boxes. Yeah, they tried to like do a festival and over in Europe these, somewhere. Yeah, they're they're like in little container boxes. Yeah, and I guess you could bring your friends in there. Right, like, that's ah, what I'm this, saying. 
there's oh. there's no good way about this. It's impossible. All of these businesses are designed to be at full capacity. Anything less than full capacity, and you're not going to break even or make a profit. So, you know, I, <laughs> I don't. Know that's the thing. This. I don't have the answers for it. Right. <laughs> they they need people because everybody's getting antsy and people want solutions. And then now they're like, we well, got a vaccine. Let's go. Let's let's do something. Like so. I don't I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. I've been following this thing since uh, 19, 2019. Mm -hmm. And I would say late December. And I made my video about it initially in January 2020. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, hey, it's nothing to worry about. And I was like, I don't know. This looks bad. And yeah, it's just progressively worse every year. But still, we... People, I don't think that the solution is to not do anything and wait it out. Yeah. Like people need to be more creative. And some of these things are dumb. I'll say that. I think some of them are dumb. Straight and dumb. I think, <laughs> I think sometimes like the government is just being overhanded with the, some stuff too. It's like we, we have stores over here and, you know, they're like only five people can be in a store. But I'm like, this is a big superstore. We could, we could throw a couple more people in here, but everyone's like, nope, five six people. or seven in there at least, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can at least throw two more people in there, but like they're like, right. nope, five people, that's it. And everyone's lining outside, and we got snow on the ground, so it's not people are people are getting very antsy up here. I'll say that uh, that is, people are not comfortable with the concept of another year of this. They're like, you make a solution, whether it's the government or business, make a solution so people can kind of get back to some kind of semblance of normalcy. And uh, I don't know, like you, you saw the Super Bowl and they had cutouts for a bunch of people. The I think Zoom it was people. like, I call them Zoom people. Yeah, it was like, what is it, 20% capacity? I think is 20 were, or 30% they, capacity. They were separated, you know, and, and yeah, and yeah now, they were separated. You know, yeah. And now, you know, um, the NFL commissioner is saying that, you know, all 32 stadiums will be, vaccination uh vaccination sites now really so, so they yeah. yeah so that's kind of cool too but you know they they've mm -hmm. been doing that over in the uk already you know in huge mm -hmm. stadiums you know they were doing it at dodger stadium as well and then there was a huge protest and they had to like shut it down and now it's back open you need mm -hmm. places that big to do mass vaccinations you know you, you you just can't do that like at the hospital drive through or something like that or a cvs drive through you need massive mm -hmm. like places with massive parking lots to actually make that happen logistically that's what you're going to need but it's going to be difficult to get at a point and we talk about this you know every time mm -hmm. we have a chat we talk about this because it's, it still comes down to the same thing people need to just understand the protocols so that this thing isn't just like spreading like wildflower uh wildflowers mm -hmm. you know it's just like yeah you know if you need to go to the grocery store go to the grocery store if you need to go get your licks you know go to the liquor store get your liquor come back mm -hmm. to the crib and that's it <clears throat> you know do, do you need to go to a restaurant no like you know up, up in the town center where i live Mm -hmm. I see people on weekends with like birthday balloons and, you know, walking into <laughs> restaurants like, really? I mean, is it that all dressed up and everything? Is it that serious? It's just well, not that serious. I think the the issue, too, is you got human nature. Humans are just designed to be like uh, not that you can't tell them anything, but they want to be free. And so, you know, you've, you've had a year of everybody telling you what you can and can't do. And I think that that restless nature is is just getting worse and worse out of people. So that to tell people like, hey, OK, just stay home for another couple of weeks. They're like, well, you told us that a couple of months ago. And we like I would say where I live, people complied like without a shadow of a doubt. Everybody put their mask on immediately. Mm -hmm. There was no I'm not going to do that. You can't tell me what to do. Everybody's like, OK, we're all in this together. They did it yeah. all that. And it. the government was like. Yeah, another month, and then wow. another month, and then another month, and then like, people were just starting like, well, wait a minute, we're everybody's wearing masks. What do you, what else do you need? Like, you're not you're not going to see anybody in any stores 
fighting to not wear a mask where everybody's got a mask on everyone's like uh, too close six feet or whatever so i think that for for where i live people's attitude is okay we did everything you asked us to do and it's not getting better so what are the solutions you got like and, I'm going and that's out. honestly that's <laughs> where people feel like right now it, they, wow. they're getting very restless so I, I don't know how far it's gonna go we had a a huge protest uh i think it's last week or the week before oh really I mean, thousands thousands of people were downtown in the city with saying, mask on or city. no mask yeah with the with the mask on but they're okay. like like open up the city the whole city not just part of it or the grocery store because like there's a there's like the trendy area in town and you can just see foreclosures everywhere out mm -hmm. of business and it's like the whole strip and i think there's only a couple businesses that are hanging on but you know, everybody complied and still like the, the shutdowns, it, it hurt. It took a lot of bit, money out of the, the businesses and stuff like that. And it's the same thing with concerts and clubs. A lot of clubs and bars all closed down. And I honestly don't think they're coming back, to be honest. So I think that that's why people, their energy is just like, hey, all right, <laughs> let's let's figure something out. Let's go. You know, it's unfortunate, but... um I would say 50 to 70% of these smaller sort of businesses, they're not coming back. I oh, mean, no, it, it's a shame that like some of the most popular sort of institutional places like mm -hmm. in DC, you know, just watering holes for like lobbyists, you know, K street lawyers, you know, just, you know, gathering mm -hmm. spots where people just hang out on a regular basis have been doing it for decades. These places are gone now. You yeah. Know, just completely yeah gone and they're not coming back but you do see and it's weird because there are new restaurants and bars opening mm -hmm. up and i'm like well, that's good yeah but you're opening up at what 10 25 percent capacity this yeah. is not a time when i would just open up a new restaurant or a bar in the middle of lockdown. No, I wouldn't do that now i may rent something and hold on to mm -hmm. it and then develop it knowing that you know, things will get back to normal, but no. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough because I think a lot of people will say that if you're a business owner and you want to get in front of the things, because the second it does open up, everyone's going to run to the places that are ready to go. It's going to be crazy, you know. So, you know, I think they're trying to get in front of it. And I, I understand that mentality, but I, who's to say how, how many months it's going to take? I do think that probably by spring, they're going to reel back a lot of the restrictions all over the place, especially in North America. Uh, I can see them. They're talking about that here. And I know a couple of states are talking about that as well. So, like, I, well, I, I think Georgia is open. I, Atlanta is open. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Florida is open. Well, that, <laughs> that's why the, the Super Bowl was hilarious, because Florida is open, open. <laughs> they're not kind of open. They are 100% open with no masks. And they, the NFL was like, no, 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 we're we're kind of doing things here too. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Forget what's happening behind the stadium, just inside the stadium. We're doing things right. So, yeah, I, I thought uh, that was hilarious. I know people who live in Florida, and they live close to the stadium, and they're like, yeah, no one's wearing masks over here. No one's doing. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. You know what's weird is, um, I was reading this article, um, about this YouTube. And, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, royalties and things of that nature, right? This yes. is specific to the UK only, right? Not the EU. Yeah, this is just the UK because uh, they've been heavily lobbied by artists to get a better pay for Spotify and all of these other companies, all the streaming services. And, and so... Uh, some of the people in the legislator in the government are starting to take up these things and make bills and to push it forward. So uh, I think the UK is going to be a, a right place to put out music. Now it may put up a couple of businesses may go out of business because of it, <laughs> because they're good. They're paying a lot more fees than I think they're, they're planning to in the future. But uh, it, this is interesting here. This is a huge deal that YouTube is going to change how much money they're going to pay back to artists for playing music on their platform. And I don't I know you're you're an iPhone guy, right? Yeah. 
Google has gotten rid of their Google Play uh, app on the phone. Mm-hmm. And they're replacing it with a YouTube Play like app. Premium, I think. YouTube uh, Premium or something like that. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm a Google Or no, person, no, no, so Google I, Play, you know. Yeah, it's a, Google... it's a YouTube music thing. That's what they're replacing it with. Right. I mm-hmm. think it's what it's called. But so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Samsung phone user. and Android all I, day. Android, yeah. So I, I instantly was like, nope, not YouTube for me. I switched over to Samsung has a music player. And I, I'm using Tidal now, so I'm switching between the two of those. But mm-hmm. uh, it... YouTube has been pu- making this push to be more of a music platform. And and so it kind of bit them in the ass, I guess, mm-hmm. <laughs> because now they have to do no- more higher royalties to the artists right. that are on- going to be on their platform. But, you know, mm-hmm. Google can afford it. So, <laughs> right. You know, these you know, companies can't. You know, what's weird about this article is I was just, again, just reading it. And basically, mm-hmm. again, this is the U.K., and yeah. they were saying that the, uh, you know, from artist royalties on YouTube, um, you know, YouTube paid out $47 million, right? But yeah. they compared it to vinyl sales, which was $90 million. <laughs> yeah. So it's better if is you're vinyl artist, coming you back. Print? It is. Yeah, I will. I, I shouldn't say officially. But mm-hmm. vinyl has outpaced CDs and this kind of thing. The these other the outside of streaming, vinyl is is made a huge comeback. And yeah, you know, it's in stores. You can go to stores and buy record players it's now. At like Best Buy, stores. you know, it's at, yeah, it's uh, out, Best Urban buy. Outfitters. I think that there's the there's the hipster vibe to it. And but like you know, for me, I I go back and buy you know classic albums that I love. Mm. that i had or they're broken or whatever like they're scratched up right. so i I've, I've been going back and trying to replace a lot of music that i had just to have it and it's not anything for to be special for it i i'm probably gonna leave them sealed but i've been buying a lot of albums like that and yeah i'll leave yeah, them sealed, there's a lot of people for sure who, a lot of mm-hmm. people feel like that too they just want to go it's the classic thing especially for your things that you've grown up on or things that you love mm-hmm. uh like i want to yeah, it's, it's a personal thing for me. I've been going back and trying to get all these classic albums. They are really expensive, man. I'm, I'm kind of mad I opened some of these. And <laughs> I have, um, I think I told you this before, but my, my oldest brother, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, I inherited all of his vinyl when he passed away. And he mm-hmm. had a collection of the Old and New Testament on vinyl, the Bible. <laughs> Yeah, and so I was like, oh, I don't want this. I was just really, I was going to toss it. Really, I mean, like, I'm a mm-hmm. DJ. I'm, I'm about to toss some vinyl, and I said, you know, well, wait a minute. Let me like take a you know screenshot of the barcode mm-hmm. and just you know put it into a search bar and see what comes up on Amazon or eBay. Mm-hmm. Come to find out, this collection is worth about five hundred dollars, right? <laughs> it's, I'm looking at it now. It's about like four boxes. It's about um like you know just four packs, and it's maybe mm-hmm. um ten pieces of vinyl per pack, so about forty um mm-hmm. forty pieces uh forty records. And you know my boy was saying like, dude, man, we can sample the mess out of that. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but I would have to chop it up though, you know, to to sample. Yeah, yeah. It. But um. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, I don't, I don't think CDs are still being made because you know computers and things like that, like laptops, just don't have CD players, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, none so, of my laptops or desktops have a CD player on it. Right. So I, I mean, had to buy external CD player one time for right. I mean, I have an external it. right CD player because I still have some old like mm. old tracks that producer tracks that I made that I copied on CD. So I still have like an external CD you know, player mm-hmm. and I can, you know, just uh, rip things off of that, but it's rare that I even use it. Um, but yeah, so rec and, and you know, the other thing is like vinyl is really big in Europe. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it's really big. So, um, and I, and I still have producer friends who, you know, who, who do house music and they're like, you know, you know, they're going to do like five mm-hmm. or 600, you know, pieces of vinyl and sell it and they oh, sell yeah. it, you know? So, I mean, 
are we going to get back to the <laughs> days of like, you know, DJing and bringing like four or five crates of records? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that. See, I mean, anybody who's lived through that is like, yeah. oh, hell no. <laughs> right. The thing I would yeah. do is this, though. I think like now I because we've been DJing for so, such a long time with vinyl, we mm-hmm. came from vinyl. I think now I understand how I could actually do a vinyl set. And I'll tell you how, mm-hmm. excuse me. So I have like, um, you know, I have like cases that I can put vinyl in that'll hold about 50 or a hundred, you know, pieces of vinyl. I also have like shoulder bags that can hold like 20 to 30. Right. Yeah. I can do a set with a bag of vinyl with about 20 or 30 pieces of vinyl, you know, I, you know, you know, with vinyl, you have a lot of extended sort of, you know, um, mixes on these uh, 12 inches. So you can Mm -hmm. sort of, and and they have nice journeys and nice movements, you know, you know, just in Mm -hmm. terms of the tracks. So with about 20 to 30 tracks, I could probably do a hour and a half to two hours, stretching it to two hours though, but an hour and a half track with like, 20 to 30 tracks you know so yeah yeah yeah, i can i can do that so i can i can go into a club or you know not a club but you know into a bar or a lounge or something like that with a bag Mm -hmm. of records and you know at least i'm holding something on you know just something throw something over my shoulder you know i'm not really Mm -hmm. carrying crates or records so i could do that again i think i've gotten a lot smarter because back in the Mm -hmm. day you know I would do a two hour party and bring like six crates of records. Oh my goodness, man. I don't miss those days. Silly, wasn't it? I don't miss those days at all. (laughs) It was so silly, man. It was back busting. People don't understand that, you know, DJing, it was, it was just back busting. You know, it was work. It was serious, wasn't it? It was like, um, the biggest thing for me was that, you know, you couldn't go to the bathroom because people steal your records. Yeah. If there was other DJs that were there, they will go through your crates the second you turned your back. So you had to sit on your crates the whole night and you DJs weren't going anywhere. Like you <laughs> were notorious for like just taking records from you. Just Yeah, like, absolutely. Even you transmitting, transporting them to the car, you had to watch them. So yeah, I used to call up friends mm-hmm. and be like, hey, I need you to get to this club where it's closed. Knock on the door. Tell them Keo's here. Right. You're going to come here and help me get these records out of here. Yeah, because like yo, you couldn't, you could not turn your back for a second, and it was just like y- your night was done. You want to talk to a girl, you have to be like, yo, I'll give my number later. <laughs> whatever happens, if I see you again, great. If not, whatever, Dude. man. <laughs> it's so. I mean, you know, those were like really good times. Uh, but you know, again, mm-hmm. at the end of the night, when you had to like pack up the car uh, with the vinyl, yeah. Yeah, pretty serious. And, um, you know, even if you had friends with you, they may have left early because they linked up with someone and like, hey, you know, exactly. I'm you can rely because, on them. You, right, you cannot you know? rely on them. <laughs> so you just really needed a road buddy or, you know, like mm-hmm. another DJ to DJ with you guys, DJ together. And then you can pretty much do it that way. But today yeah, you yeah. walk in with like a thumb drive and some headphones and you just are ready to go. You're walking in with a backpack, basically, you know? Yeah. How do you, how do you um, go back? Or even, even if you have your turntables and, or like, uh, some vinyl, like yeah. control vinyl, whatever, mm-hmm. and, and a laptop, like, how do you go back? I, I don't know. I couldn't see me going back. Like I, I still buy records, but I don't ever plan on playing them outside my house ever again. I mean, <laughs> like, it's honestly. cool to, you know, do these sort of DJ nights where, DJs are only spinning vinyl, but it's like mm-hmm. four or five DJs spinning that evening. So you come in and you have like a one hour set again, you're coming in with like a shoulder yeah. bag of vinyl. So that's kind of cool. You know, so you get I can to do one crate. Yeah. <laughs> one crate. It's all right. That's okay. I could do one crate with a handle can... though. I want a crate yeah, that I has a top with the handle. I can just walk <laughs> in, you know, and then close yeah. it up and walk out, you know, but, um, yeah, well, I, I got don't know. smarter. I got the I got a trolley that I put my stuff on now. I got I got smarter. Back in the day, I, like a shopping I cart, everything. like with wheels. Yeah, it's like a like a wheel, like you know, you lift up the boxes, like that right. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's convertible, so it'll go in half, and it it can it has a flatbed part and the wheels on the bottom. And I used to pull, I throw speakers on there when I do mobile events. Yeah, and it's just so much better. <laughs> it's yeah, so yeah, much yeah. better. Now, you know, this is actually great because like this next piece, 
um, is mm-hmm. about this guy who wrote a book. You know, he's talking about ninety nine percent of DJs who never make it big. That's not like an epiphany. <laughs> no, you know, it's, <laughs> no. It's just like I mean, again, we're talking about it's always a one percent in all types of industries, right? It's always yeah. a one percent. But mm-hmm. I think he also misses the point here too. Um, so give us a little background on this article here. So we have a DJ. He's uh, he used to play in Ibiza, and all, you know he's doing he's doing all the big things. And like for I look at for for DJs in success, I think it depends on what type of DJ you are, and I think that's the part that he's missing. Because not every DJ is going to magically get to the Lear Jets and doing out stadiums and that kind of thing. Right. For for some people, success is I DJ on the radio, and that's a huge thing for me. Right. And you know, some people are like, "Well, I made mixtapes and I sold them." Some people are like, "Yo, I do weddings, and I'm I'm a successful doing weddings, and that's my right. thing." The mm-hmm. way he's looking at it is, if you don't get to the festival, right. you're you're in that ninety nine percent. I have a that's why I wanted to do the article because I don't I don't agree with that concept of success. I think that you could look at, you know, I I look at it from the standpoint of can you make a living from this and and pay your bills? I think you're successful from that standpoint. You, you know, know that, that's kind of how I look at it. I don't look at it from, you know, you have to reach the pinnacle of DJing to to be great. Cuz a lot of the, like the a lot of DJs he's talking about, they don't even DJ. They they're producers. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, like it's not even the actual DJ thing. You know, the name of his book, long, the guy's name is uh, Harold Heath, and the name of his mm-hmm. book is Long Relationships, uh, My Incredible Journey from Unknown DJ to Small-Time DJ, right? And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, small-time DJ is just like, I, I kind of think, like, uh, you, this may be an interesting book to, to pick up, too, you know, just mm-hmm. for a quick read. Um, but I think... You know, he kind of misses the point, too, because you sort of hit it on the head when you said that, you know, you could be a local DJ and DJ in a lot of different clubs or Mm -hmm. bars and things of that nature and do really well. Or you can be like a DJ in your specific country and you travel around from like Atlanta to Chicago to Houston to yeah. LA to you know San Francisco and you're making money that way as well. I know DJs who you know just travel within the United States and they make dollars. You know they go over to like you know New York they make three thousand dollars. They go to LA mm-hmm. they make you know six thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. Even if they're making two thousand yeah. dollars, but they're doing that three and four times a week, they're making right. a pretty good. They're making a decent living. Yeah. You know so. Do I mm-hmm. need as a DJ? And, and you know, I, I was at, at one point, I was that DJ who was basically traveling around the United States, Chicago, San Francisco, mm-hmm. uh, Miami, you know, Atlanta, DJing. And mm-hmm. it was pretty good, you know. But the other thing is like, do I want to be a DJ who lives in a suitcase 320 days a year? I don't know if that's something yeah. I would do, you know. <laughs> I'm I'm not a touring DJ. I know that. <laughs> I like to I know kick a couple back. touring DJs. Right. Yeah. I, I, I like I like to kick I like back. going home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's um who's the guy? There was this uh what's this DJ's name? Um he is um what is his name? Oh, Bass Nectar. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. he's a producer too. He's a producer too. So I was reading an yeah. article where they were basically saying that this guy has basically before, you know, the shutdown, this guy has mm-hmm. basically been on tour for the last five years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, no, I would, I would be totally <laughs> burned. I would be burned out, dude. I'm just like, are you serious? I'm gonna, I'm on a plane. I don't even like planes, you know. I'm, on, I'm on yeah. a plane when I need to take one, and I definitely don't like the trip from the East Coast to the West Coast. That's just like crazy long. You can't mm-hmm. stand up. Um, I can't, you know. I mean, I'm not that tall. I'm six feet, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I like to sit like in a, uh, on the uh, the aisle seat because I like to sort of stretch my legs, right? Because those, you know, mm-hmm. you don't have a lot of like room, and I'm just like. 
you know, you can't stand up. You can't stretch your legs. You know, the, the blood yeah. circulation. It's just like, no, I am not on a plane. I'm, I'm sorry. I am not living in a suitcase mm-hmm. for 320 days a year. Now, take some of those DJs who do residencies over the summer in Ibiza. Now, that's a little yeah. different because yeah, they're yeah. living in Ibiza for the summer. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. So it's just like, okay, I'm there for like three or four months, you know, two months, whatever. I'm okay yeah, yeah. with that, you know, but like on a plane, like one day I'm on a plane, Every day, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I'm DJing like the next day I'm on a plane. Like, no dude, I'm serious. It is like, and you can, you know, you can see the fatigue on some of these DJs. You can see the fatigue. Oh, for sure. In their face, sure. in their body, you know. <laughs> no, really, right? It's just like you yeah, gotta yeah. take care of your stuff, you know, your, your body. Yeah. You gotta take care of yourself, and it's just like you can't be like at that altitude on a regular basis again. You know, that's not healthy. Mm-hmm. Blood flow, everything else, you know, oxygen levels, you know, it just doesn't work. And I'm just like, no, that's not something I would do. I yeah. would not. I'd be okay with traveling maybe at this point in my life, maybe Mm -hmm. three times a month, maybe four. That's it. Here's the thing, right? I feel, and I've, I've had okay success. I'm not, I'm not huge DJ. I'm not even well-known in my own city. So like I get, I just, I do some weddings during the summer and I do some other stuff and Mm -hmm. I do okay. Like, but like I know for me personally, I couldn't do a tour uh, and just be on the road for like no. nine months. I couldn't no. do that. Mm-hmm. Like just being in the different hotel room and flying everywhere. Cause the, the thing about it too, is for me, I'm burnt out at the end of wedding season <laughs> here. <laughs> right. Like I'm just done. I don't want to hear any more brides. I don't want to hear any songs. Mm-hmm. I was going to curse for a second. Uh, I don't want to hear any songs. You know, like, like you, you're playing the same songs over and everyone's doing the same thing. And here it comes whatever. Like, I don't want to do that. Like just, no. After a while, you're just like, I, I'm done. I don't want to hear this again for a minute. And so, like, I, I can do these short bursts and I'm good, but doing eight months of just the same thing. Cause you're these type DJs who tour, they're playing their music. So it's like a band who's playing, you know, the same, the, the greatest hits over mm-hmm. and over again. Right. And, and we don't live a healthy life. We're not doing our tour in the middle of the day and then we get to take a nap and then go, you know, on V like we, we can go relax for the rest of the evening. Right. All of our shows start at 10 PM to four o'clock in the mm-hmm. morning or whatever. Mm-hmm. And our after parties, whatever. And then, you know, there's drinking and there's all this other stuff. I had a stretch. Uh, I think it's like two years ago now where I was drinking alcohol and I was eating wings. I was just eating very unhealthy wait a minute wait and, a minute yeah <laughs> were they lemon pepper wings or buffalo wings that's really important. i had a i had a mango chipotle wing that was oh my goodness you went it. in dude and, oh it was phenomenal right really i got the finger purses here it was phenomenal but <laughs> i had a it's a long story but I, I had a coupon they gave me a coupon for free wings every wednesday and wow. because of that I would go get a pound of free wings and then buy a pound of regular wings plus, you know, two pints of beer. And I was just like, this is, we're doing shots and stuff. I was like, I can't do this. Like, wow. there's no way I can continue this for, you know, another couple of months. So mm-hmm. I stopped, I cut out like wings for a good chunk of the year. I think the last time I had wings was yesterday <laughs> for the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I was like, I, I got to cut back on beer. I got to cut, cut, cut back on alcohol. And this kind of stuff, like, I was just like, I can't, DJs, the way we do our events overnight is long hours. You know, we're in an area where there's alcohol and that kind of stuff like that. It's not helpful. And a lot of these tour DJs, they got drugs and stuff like that. You know, it our mental health is draining. And to do shows Dude. that long on mm-hmm. the road, I just couldn't do it. I know I couldn't yeah. do it. You know, and so that's, um, that's how I look at it. <laughs> You know, it's it's like even when I was, you know, DJing before this craziness, mm-hmm. you know, where it happened, you know, in the wintertime, I wouldn't DJ. I'm like, OK, I'm not DJing. Like, why? Because, you know, I'm a homebody. You know, it's just in the wintertime, <laughs> I'm at home. I'm not DJing in the wintertime. Yeah. I'm not, 
you know, and obviously when we were, you know, just lugging all this equipment, records and things mm-hmm. like that, I definitely was not DJing in the winter. But even now when you're just carrying a backpack or, you know, a little shoulder pouch or something like that, I'm still mm-hmm. not DJing in the winter time. Um, and I, I understand what you're saying because a lot of times when I was DJing and I would be done at 2 or 3 a.m., 4 a.m., I go get me some food, right? Yes, <laughs> and, you're going to eat after. It just happens. Yeah. And sometimes it wasn't necessarily healthy food because, you know, you're not yeah. finding healthy food at like 3 a.m. You're finding, uh, we call it, uh, we call it um, drunk pizza. You know, the big yeah. slices of pizza, like for $2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, that's drunk pizza. That's pizza, you know, drunk people <laughs> eat after they leave the club, right? So yeah, you're not getting a veggie wrap right now. I don't know. Hold the four, salad dressing. Four and just forget like, about it. No, that's not yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting crappy bar food. In that is not happening. I mean, so, but yeah. again, you know, it's, um, I think this DJ, I think this book, and again, like I said, I'm, it's kind of interesting. I may have to pick it up, but I think he mm. kind of misses the point too, because, you know, a lot of DJs, don't some DJs, but a lot of DJs, Mm -hmm. that's not, they're not thinking like, Hey, I want to be like a Tiesto or a Carl Mm -hmm. Cox or, you know, like a a dub fire or something like that. You know, things Mm -hmm. like that happen, you know, it's just like, you have to, you can't just be a DJ either. You know, you can, but Mm -hmm. you have to, to, to be on that sort of tour status, that festival status, you have to be a producer as well. You can't just be a DJ. You have to be a DJ producer. You have to have product. You have to do remixes and things of that nature. Now, again, like I said, I know DJs who are DJ producers and they do pretty well. They go to like, you know, Asia, Mm -hmm. they go to like the Caribbean, they go to Africa and they do Mm -hmm. maybe, you know, 20 or 30 shows a year. They're good. You're going to do okay. You're going to do pretty good. You're going to do, you're going to do pretty good. But like I said, Mm -hmm. winter time comes, dude, I'm not leaving the house. (laughs) I am not leaving the house. Forget about it. You know, that's, I mean, I feel you. I do. uh, Well, I I used to do a new year's boat cruise and that is just that when that wind cuts you off the water, you reevaluate your life. You're like, maybe I should make better decisions. Like, (laughs) No, it's dude. fine. Like, yeah, I'm in the car. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do this thing, and you have to walk across the dock to get to the boat. And oh my yeah. goodness! But like, the views are spectacular, and that's why people yeah. come out to that kind yeah. of stuff. But you know, you, you got to be dedicated. I see girls, and they're like wearing sandals and like a mini dress, and they just brave it. They're just like, go power through in the middle of winter. The- yeah, man, absolutely. <laughs> These girls, like, sometimes you'll get people where they'll wear boots whatever but like i've seen a bunch of girls just sandals open toe sandals mini skirt and like a a scarf <laughs> covering up their it's canada man like it's canadians are different we're, we're mm-hmm. different people but uh yeah <laughs> no I'm, I'm not doing that we're on the dj thing man okay we have your favorite <laughs> dj software is tractor <laughs> tell me about tractor and but before you even go there because tractor is now like you know big sir like uh, uh mm-hmm. compatible but so is record box you know they just released yes. the statement like you know as well like serato is not there yet they're really looking at this they're like i think what mm-hmm. they're doing is serato is they want to make serato work natively with m1 yeah because right now i think that tractor and record box and i'm i could be wrong but i think they they're running via uh rosetta not natively so tell me about this whole you know announcement that native native instruments made about you know tractor being big sur compatible and the very (laughs) important question is why does it matter with tractor Tractor was the first to be compatible with Big Sur. Mm-hmm. And then Ruggerbox came out just a little bit after them. So there's people working in the factories there. They're, they're getting stuff, stuff done. All right. So, you know, fingers crossed. Hopefully, you're going to keep it going. But uh, I believe they did a tweak to it. So it, it does support the M1 
and uh, natively. So that's a positive. Natively, because, really. Natively, yeah. I believe that that's what I'm hearing from from what they're saying that, that it, it does support the M1 natively. I think you kind of get it by default because of Big Sur, but I think they're they're trying to tweak it to make it run really well on the M1 chips instead of just Big Sur. Because there's a big distinction here. Uh, Big Sur is here, and there's a little bit of Rosetta Stone magic going on here to get to the M1 chip. Uh, so if it is native for the M1 chip, it should run really smooth. It on, should run on the smooth, platforms. dude. You know, yeah. on the M1s. You know. So yeah, that this is it's a huge deal that they are supporting it, and hopefully, uh, Serato gets their act together and they they come through. And they get, they get their update soon. Now, I think the thing is interesting is that Tractor had just had the sale uh, as a couple of weeks ago. Right. Uh, yeah, they just got sold, and they were managed. They managed to knock this out in record time for them. Let's be honest, right? Tractor is usually does, delayed. Does with the that update. mean any? But you know what? Big, Big Sur has been out for a really long time. Well, not a really long time, but it's well, been out summer for summer last while. year. Right. Uh-huh. Summer last year. Yeah. So. Do you think that because they knocked out this whole and and that's still a lot of a lot of time to you know even think about you know mm. creating the compatibility with Big Sur, but do you think they did this because they're gearing up to maybe separate the two you know sort of departments? <laughs> uh, I hope, I really hope they separate them, but at least make them compatible with the two compartments everyone's been begging for tractor to work with all the other native instrument stuff and machine how about tractor to work (laughs) yeah i i'm biased man i got my i got my tractor record up here i got my tractor record up there i know but you Uh, know what but but you know what here's the thing man you know that tractor is the first dj software i started on i was a a huge tractor Mm -hmm. fan you know yeah i mean I just love the flexibility of it. You know, I like how it looked um, and it just started getting buggy. And here's the really weird thing, not the weird thing, Mm -hmm. but here's the thing that Native Instruments Tractor has to really look out for. And and they may want to think about just saying, hey, you know what, let's separate this and sell Mm -hmm. it to another. They could probably sell it to someone. I don't know. You think um, uh, in music brands would buy Tractor? Because, I mean, we, we spoke about like them maybe buying like, you know, um, virtual DJ, but do you think they would buy something like a, um, a tractor and music brands? I think, I think they would buy a tractor if they could get the native instrument stuff to the, all the music stuff. Oh, well, you okay. Know, but, but okay. Yeah, but if, me, it, if me... it's just tractor by itself, I don't think they would. Okay. It's I... just tractor by itself. Now remember, um, all the complete stuff, the native mm. instruments, complete stuff. They're kind of, um, competing with all of this sort of devices and software yeah, that from, Akai is making now. Yeah. So they yeah. really don't need that sort of portion, that department of native instruments. Now mm-hmm. I will say this as well, and you brought this to my attention a, a few shows ago and I've been using it lately, but mm-hmm. um, algorithms DJ do, they got some tech, but <laughs> they have some tech, <laughs> They have some tech it behind is, this software, man. It is pretty good. I have to say, it, it's pretty good. <laughs> it is pretty good. I have Reloop is sending me a one of their baby controllers that uses, uh, it works, um, mm. it's exclusively, it, it works with, I think it's the Reloop Buddy. It works with, um, you know, the yeah. iPad and its algorithm app, you know, and it has a neuro mix yeah. or all that stuff. And I'm just like, you know, they, I mean, obviously, Virtual DJ has that as well. But, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I bring up Algorithm DJ to say that, you know, if Tractor doesn't uh, get their stuff together, you know, Algorithm yeah, is like nipping on the heels because that is a serious software. It has tech mm-hmm. behind it. It's a smooth software, too. You well, know, it's, it's designed for Apple. Like, they're... They're working together. It's like a partnership. Yeah. So they, they get they have the insights that these other companies don't have. Right. So it can run a lot smoother than these other companies can for the stuff that they're trying to do. It runs I mean, natively it, too. It, yeah. So there's, mm-hmm. there's, it was the first one to support Big Sur. But before, I think 
when I say the support of the big four, Tractor is the first one out the gate. But uh, Algorithm DJ was back in, uh, I think, December, mm -hmm. maybe January. They were their first supported. So it, like, it, it's a huge deal. Now, I think that this is a good sign from Tractor to be like, hey, we're, we're working here. Just hang with us a little bit longer. There's more more good stuff to come. We'll get it together. Like hang it. with us a yeah, little we'll longer. Get we, we, we're gonna get tractor three or four ready for you. We promise. Yeah, we're at we're at three we're at three point four, I think. Three point three. I, I can't mm -hmm. remember which now. Like uh, four point should be here soon. I think hopefully. Wow. Uh listen, I I, I believe <laughs> I believe in tractor. I'm I'm hoping very strongly. I love the software. I've made multiple videos. I got like four or five videos of me just ripping them to shreds, telling these companies what to do. Not ripping tractors to shreds. I love tractors. Ripping native instruments to shreds to get on the ball. Let's go. Uh, so uh, I, I'm hopeful here. I'm very hopeful. Now, it's it's a good sign because a lot of these companies, been take, they've been dragging their feet supporting Big Sur. And it's been killing a lot of Apple users who... They haven't. They weren't paying attention to their laptop, and they accidentally updated the system. And you know, the only thing that they're fortunate about is we're in a big pandemic, and a lot of these guys can't DJ. Because if this happened during a normal season, these guys would be screwed. A lot of people yeah. would be screwed. Yeah. And and all of the platforms to take forever to get around to supporting it. I don't. I think this is the longest it's ever taken for them to get around to doing the updates. I, I think um, you know. We're, we're recording on Ecamm Live right now, and this is mm -hmm. specifically made for the Mac. You can't use it on, you know, a PC. Yeah. So when you have a software that's specifically made for Apple, the Mac, they're ahead of the game. So, you know, when the new, like, OS comes out, they already, you know, they already have, like, the blueprint. So, it, mm -hmm. it's, you know, their software is going to be updated to uh, run natively. So that works out pretty well. Um Tractor, I mean, I really hope Tractor does, like, do something and really get it together. I also think that, I think with this, the new OS, I think, you know, some of these companies trying to develop and program their application mm -hmm. to work on the new OS, I think it's a lot more complicated because now with the new chipset, they're like, okay, we not only have to create or update you know, our software to work on the new mm -hmm. operating system. But why do that now when we also have to update our software to work on the new chipset as well? So yeah. I think a lot of companies, they're like saying, okay, well, we know that they probably knew that, you know, there was a new OS coming out, but there was also a chipset coming out, a new processor, you know, with the M1. Yeah. So I, I think that a lot of companies said, well, let's just wait until the, until it all comes out and we can sort of get it together. But um, I don't know, man. You know, um, Tractor <laughs> better. I, I don't know, man. You know, Tractor better yeah. get it together because, you know, you can't just be a software. Now, mm -hmm. again, extremely cool. Uh, you know, we can blend into this next piece we're going to talk about. Again, we're talking mm -hmm. about DJ software, and it is Serato, right? Mm -hmm. You know, now... I don't know. We speak about Twitch all the time, right? So mm -hmm. Serato is doing this like series. I, I actually like this. I think this is pretty cool. And, you know, there are two episodes or two sessions with uh, Rich Medina, who I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of because he's not only a dope DJ, but he's sort of like an ambassador too, you know? I mean, and he's just so knowledgeable. So, and he knows his stuff, you know? So, I know he's mm -hmm. going to go deep with like some of this stuff, but you know, they're doing this sort of a uh, tribute, the celebration for black history month, you know, on Twitch, uh, right on the Serato channel on Twitch. And, you know, they have some sessions here and um, you know, the last two sessions, four and five are going to be with uh, rich Medina. They're going to be talking about um, house and techno and also yeah. sampling. And that should be pretty cool. What do you think about this? I mean, so again, we, we talk about, you know, Tractor and also even mm -hmm. Recordbox. Serato seems to be the DJ software or even the company in the DJ um, industry when it comes to software. 
that, you know, they have their ear to the ground. They're doing things like, you know, just based mm-hmm. on like the times, you know, just Black Lives Matter, you know, like Black History Month, yada, yeah, yada, I yada, all this other stuff. Serato is, in, I think they embrace culture, the cultures yes. mm-hmm. better than a lot of the other platforms. Yes. I think the other platforms are more just, we're worried about the hardware and this kind of thing. Right. And I think Serato, the, the group behind Serato is trying to reach out to different genres of music mm-hmm. and to work with different types of people for, for, you know, to expand what Serato means and the connection to the DJs and the music. So like, I, I like the idea of it. Absolutely. I think this is kind of cool. I don't think they should limit it though here. I think they need to go forth and, you know, Afro jazz, like whatever, like you go into everything, you know, any, every type of genre of music you can go to, just keep keep this thing going. I think overall, it's a good idea. Right. And, it, you know, the limitation, like you just said, is it doesn't have to just be bl- uh, Black History Month either. Yeah. This yeah. thing could be large. You can not only do it on Twitch, but after you do it live on Twitch, then you can post it to your YouTube channel. Yeah, I mean, this could be, I mean, who knows? Next thing you know, when you have some Serato thing is kind of cool because, you know, and I was about to say before we got cut off, if they did mm-hmm. the series and continued it after Black History Month and it was really cool and they were able to post it on YouTube, you know, this is when companies like Netflix see stuff like this and the next thing you know, yeah they want to pick up your show or something like that. You know, they want to pick up the series and create a Netflix mm-hmm. show, you know, just like, Hey, you know what? This is kind of cool. Let's, um, let's create something that's kind of, you know, that's going to work here. Um, yeah, you could do a 30 for 30, but for DJs and musicians, and, right. <laughs> you know, you could do bluegrass. You could do, you could do so much stuff with this. It doesn't have to be just, you know, the, I think that it could be a good jump off the way they did it here and take take how they did this and add country add rock add, you know like dj's play everything every genre of music and it seems to be a good idea in that their heart is in the right place about you know educating and, and all that kind of stuff so i think that you know take it to the next step let's keep it going let's let's teach people about music and the love of music again so that's 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 my take on it i think that um I think they have something here. I think they can really, you know, I was even thinking like I would watch it on Twitch because, you know, there are even some past episodes that you can um, check out. It's only one episode that they've already done. There's another one coming up on a 10th. It's the Civil Rights to Hip Hop episode, uh, 3 yeah. p.m. Uh, Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, was that Wednesday or I think yeah, it's that's Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. you know, so I may have to check that out because it just... I don't know, you know, I mean, looks like something mm-hmm. that's going to be kind of cool. Um, they can definitely continue this. They can do this, like you said, mm-hmm. with other genres. Um, I would love to see how, and I've always said this, I would like to see someone speak about bluegrass music, its relationship, and how similar mm-hmm. bluegrass music is to hip-hop. Mm-hmm. You know, because... And with bluegrass, they're saying the same things hip hoppers say, you know, rappers say, but yeah. they're just saying it, you know, to their culture. Yeah, yeah, it's the same and, you know, thing. Music, different different instruments, but it's it's got a little vibe, and the, the tempo is really interesting too. Uh, I had to do an event, and they wanted like bluegrass uh, in the background for some of it, so I had to go find a bunch of stuff, and I was like, "Yo, I dig, I dig a lot of this stuff." Like, right? I didn't really think about it like that before. Like, I knew what it was. <laughs> But I didn't really think about it until I had to go do research on it. And I was like, right. oh, okay. It's <laughs> yeah, pretty cool, it's right? Yeah. Bluegrass is pretty cool. Like, my iPad is not hooking up to um, my Ecamm Live, but that's okay because I still have the articles here in front of me. So, Rado, um, I like this. Um, we have two other articles. This one article is kind of uh, creepy. Um, it's about mm-hmm. this guy with a capital extra, you know, the payola person like, dude, what is yeah. that all about? I mean, this <laughs> is a, okay. So, so, you know, okay. I, yeah, first things first, we have to mm-hmm. talk about the radio stations. Okay. Uh, 
I had a little short stint filling in for one of the biggest DJs in the city on his show. I played a couple of things there. So I had a little, I have some insight into this. Mm -hmm. And I also was part of one of the first streaming uh, stations in the country. There's like an actual radio station now streaming. Mm -hmm. We were way too far in in front of our times. But the point I wanted to make about this is that radio stations and DJs have been collecting money to play music forever forever <laughs> and we can go back all the way to aretha franklin to all like this it's been going on forever this is not something new or different and i gotta say allegedly i don't want to name names but you know people at hot 97 allegedly yeah where <laughs> they were they got they were famous for mm-hmm. collecting money to go yeah. play music for for new artists and that kind of thing labels used to pay them Mm-hmm. And so, like, there's a there's a joint thing. A lot of people know about it. It's not like a a, a unique thing that's this just happened to this one guy. For decades, this has been the norm. Now, the fact that this radio station has been so strict about it, that's the interesting part. So, first of all, let's explain what this is. This is a uh, mm-hmm. uh, I forgot the DJ's name. Uh, is it Tiny? Um, DJ Tiny. Tiny, yeah, and that's mm-hmm. a Stormzy's DJ from the UK. Right, and I think I, I don't know. Some people may not know who that is, but the, he's a he's a big, uh, grime type rapper, in in the UK. He's huge. He's mm. he's Drake for the UK. If you want to pull a parallel, wow. Right. And uh, yeah, so he has a DJ, and his DJ is on a radio station. Mm. And his DJ has been collecting roughly about is it two hundred. Two hundred and seventy-two dollars uh, and eighty-two cents. Two hundred pounds. Yes. Yeah, about 200 pounds <laughs> per song that he plays on his radio show. And uh, <laughs> the radio station came down on him like a ton of bricks. Yeah. And they're co- they're talking about fraud and all kind of stuff right now. Uh, that's the that's the thing that I think is interesting there. Uh, did they ban him? I, I can't I don't. He is canceled. I mean, like this guy, he basically, I mean, he apologized. He had to like, uh, you know, when I was reading the article, I was like, okay, is this guy going to apologize? And then he, after a while, he went on Twitter or whatever, you know, Instagram and apologized. Like, hey, I am doing this. In America, you know, that's kind of illegal. I mean, I'm sorry, that's legal. You know, you can, Mm -hmm. or you have, you just have to state that, you know, this song is sponsored or paid for yada 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 that is yeah. legal now here in america most people don't alert people to the fact that they took a check to pay a song yeah. they kind of they go is very under the table uh you know back in the day in the 90s they used to give guys rolexes and cars and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff i was about to, to say to two, uh, 200 <laughs> pounds is really cheap for payola right it's very cheap it's yeah. very cheap I mean, how much was this People guy were making? getting like BMWs and stuff like that to play yeah. songs in, I mean, in the 90s. People were getting like so, thousands of dollars to play music like, you know, back yeah. in the day when it was completely illegal. Um, you know, Barry yeah. Gordy. It, it's you know, always been illegal. His music on? Right. Mm-hmm. It's always been illegal. It's right. just been everyone looked the other way because the labels benefited from it. The radio stations benefited. Yeah. And so everybody just looked the other way. But it's always been illegal. Mm. Uh, so did I know they 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 kicked him off the schedule? They're not. He's off like, the schedule. He is off. Like he is. He he's done. Is he banned? Banned? Like they're like, don't ever come back to this radio station again. Like no, they he's off the schedule. He's done. He's he's, he okay. can't even play on the station anymore, dude. He's been like canceled for real. I mean, See, you know, my my question is, well, how long has he been doing this, and how long have the other DJs been doing it? Well, you know, BBC has a, a radio station. And a lot of DJs play on there. A lot of big DJs play on there. Um, and it's a really <laughs> dope. BBC Radio is uh, pretty dope too. You can get that on mm-hmm. Apple Music. You can get that on. Um, I think you can get that on. Um, well, obviously you can get it on uh, Series XM. But um, mm-hmm. you know they uh, they yeah they they play a lot of music, man. You know it's really weird that. Um, this may actually, because this guy got caught, this yeah. may trigger some sort of larger investigation because like you said, you know, they, to. right, because they were like, well, you know, this guy's not making money during, a, you know, the lockdown, mm-hmm. the pandemic. So, you know, he was doing this payola thing. Like, even if that's the case, like, 
I can't imagine him making a lot of money. I mean, not unless he was doing this for like 20, 30 people a week. It's got to be a lot of people. It's right. the, I don't think it's just the one song or whatever. It's got to yeah. be a lot of people. Yeah. So, and, and so who, the question is who snitched and <laughs> who sold them out? Oh, you know, and, someone uh, like snitched on him. Like, you know what? This guy, he's yeah. doing something, you know, <laughs> it's time to get him off like the radio station, you know, it's just like, and then you just put it out there. A person did uh, one, another DJ did, did um, sn- uh, you know, rat him out. It was, uh, let me see here. Da, 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 da. Oh, because someone said, um, let me see here. Yeah, someone. Um, the, the other thing is that DJ oh, Jay Beats, get on the Jay radio. Beats, um, Jay Beats, uh, you know, yeah, he, he sold he, about, he it, it, on him. He it's was like, very competitive to be on the radio because you get a lot of notoriety and you can make a lot of money from shows and you can, it's beneficial to be on the radio as right. a DJ. He basically said, uh, you are a fraud mate. You know, that's how they speak. Yeah. Over there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, um, I love the UK, man. Right, I, you know, I, you I charge people 200 pounds to play a song. You should be sh- ashamed of yourself. What kind of a DJ <laughs> are you? He said, it's like, dude, I'm a DJ yeah. trying to make money. That's probably what he's talking about. But you know, another interesting thing in this article is, mm. and this is the, this is the, um, the weirdness of Spotify down at the bottom of the article, Spotify mm-hmm. now has this sort of program. I'm going to, I'm going to call it a program, <laughs> right? Where yeah. you can, um, you know, influence users to make recommendations about your music. And if you do mm-hmm. that, if you sign up for that, you will get less return on like what you're supposed to get paid. Mm-hmm. So the, the sense on the sense, because that's what you're getting, like sense yeah. on the sense. <laughs> now but, you're getting half of your sense on your sense, right? But you're going to get more eyes or more ears and more plays. Right. So I, th- uh, I think a lot of people are going to make that that calculation because for, for Spotify, Spotify works for people getting into the playlist. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you don't know this artist exists, you're never going to hear their song ever like in a million years. And so, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So to get, to, to become famous in Spotify, you need to get on a popular playlist. Mm. And I believe, and this is speculation and, you know, I do it allegedly, allegedly, mm. uh, people are being paid to add songs to these playlists. Yeah. So mm-hmm. in essence, it's a similar type payola type thing here. Yeah, it where is. People were paying to get on the large playlist because there's there's playlists where there's you know millions of people are subscribed to, and you know they got a, a bunch of followers, whatever, and they they rearrange the songs in the playlist every once in a while, and they add new songs, and so people are paying to have their song added to the playlist. And mm-hmm. here we go, payola is just in a different version, but it's the same thing. Spotify is a menace, dude. I'm serious. They're just a menace <laughs> to like the whole industry. They said they call it sponsored recommendations, sponsored yeah. recommendations campaigns um, increased by 50% during like the fourth quarter of 2020. Dude, it's they are a menace, this. you know? Yeah. So people is just like, hey, you know what? If you want to get heard, if you want mm-hmm. to be up front, you know, if you want to get in these playlists, you can, you know, you know, ask your users to make all of these recommendations, but understand when you do that, money. <laughs> you are getting less money. They are a menace to the creative sort of space. They are a menace well, to creators. It's similar to what iTunes does with their first page. When you go to, to iTunes, to mm-hmm. the music page to buy music, if you're not featured on there, you're not going to do well. Yeah. And there, people are figuring out ways. I I don't know legal or not legal ways to get to the front page of iTunes, so you can get that banner up there for the new release, and you know that that kind of stuff. It, it's a very helpful. Artists who are on that front page, they're guaranteed to go platinum. <laughs> like you're, it's almost guaranteed. You do see a lot like, of the I, one I percenters up there too. Yeah, it's mostly the one percenters, but like right. I wouldn't say guaranteed, but like your your odds are very high that if you are on the iTunes home screen, you're going to go platinum. You're going to sell a, a million copies of odds are very high. Odds are very odds high. Are high. They're very what high. You, 
Um, um, okay, I'm gonna ask you this question. Um, okay, let me see how I can frame this. You know, would there be any time that as a DJ on a radio station, you would take money to play someone's song? Knowing my luck, I'd probably get caught, so I probably wouldn't do the pill with me. <laughs> like, you know, the well, first time people, you did it, like, yeah, if you, like, someone really come can. up to you, like, yeah, I could do it, uh, just give me $50, right? And it's just like, <laughs> it's just, this is what I tell people. I'm like, you know what? Some people get caught stealing mm-hmm. something at a store for, like, mm-hmm. 10 or $20. Yeah. Politicians may get caught because they took a hundred thousand dollar donation or a hundred thousand dollars sort of you know backdoor sort of deal to pass some sort of a legislation you know um a person who is a billionaire may have like did something shisty for five or ten million dollars this is what Mm -hmm. i say right i'm like dude you're worth a billion dollars and you did something shisty for ten million dollars you're a politician okay. and you did something shisty for a hundred thousand dollars. You did something really ridiculous because you went into some sort of a store and you stole something from for like fifty or ten dollars. Mm-hmm. It's just like it ain't worth it, dude, you know? Yeah, so it's not. It's You're not, not gonna it, get away with it. Right. I, and, it's a, it's how I look at it. like I I prefer <clears> if I was doing a radio again, I would prefer like my music is just, you know, my vibe and, you know, I'm I'm trying to create a feeling for what I'm playing rather than, well, these guys paid me to put this crappy song in this mix. Right. Right. Exactly. It's it's always, no one's paying you for an amazing song. You're going to play that on your own. Right. It's always the crappy song that they Mm -hmm. pay you for. So, uh, I, I probably wouldn't do it. Um, I've never been in a position to do it in the first right. place. So <laughs> the everyone's all talk too. like I wouldn't do that. Like I was yeah. never like, but then mm-hmm. I haven't been in a position to do that. The so, most I've done like, was college radio too. So it's just like, uh, yeah. I mean, you like in college radio. You, I mean, you know, we we do a show like um from mm-hmm. like eleven or twelve midnight until like you know four or five a.m. And yeah. you know, someone would like come to the you know, radio station knock on the door like, yo, I have a an uh you know a single. It's just like, yeah, I'm gonna play it. I want to be the first to release that. I don't yeah, want yeah. your money, dude. It's just like I got new. <laughs> for me, it's just like I got new vinyl, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, or I have a new vinyl. song or something like that, right? So, um, See, like, so what the labels used to do is they used to give us stickers and right. you know hats and a t-shirt, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, all the merch. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, you get a, a bad boy t-shirt or whatever, right. like that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Mm-hmm. I got a bunch of stickers all over the place, but like that wasn't enough to be like, "Hey, you gotta play this song or whatever." Right, it's just like right, a, right. Here, some stuff, you know, put it on your laptop or put it on your whatever. Like, <laughs> it's um and the other thing is um, you know, this guy DJ Tiny just mm-hmm. totally screwed up his entire career. Yeah. Off of this whole thing. I mean, the, the, I mean, he was DJing for this big artist. You know, he was on a very popular radio station and he just screwed up his entire career. Now he's apologizing online. Yeah. People are canceling him for it's like 200. It. It's due for 200 pounds for $272 and 82 yeah. cents per track. I mean, how I many tracks he would have to get paid yeah. for? on a weekly basis for this to even make sense. It's like I, I average, you know, maybe 18 to 20 something songs an hour. That's a lot of songs to play, to, to get paid from. Mm-hmm. Like it's, that's a lot of, so you'd have to play a lot of music mm-hmm. to sneak stuff in there in between the regular songs you're supposed to play right. for it to be worthwhile. Yeah. It doesn't seem worthwhile. This seems like, Two hundred dollars is sneaker money. That's the money you pay. Uh, I'm gonna get some wings and uh, I'll get some Jordans. And... Wait a minute! I have to ask <laughs> you again. What yeah. flavor wings? <laughs> Bar. I'll do buffalo though. Buffalo. Regular, <laughs> regular is buffalo. Yeah, regular is buffalo. Or a jerk. 
because I'm Jamaican, so I, I oh, give me jerk. yeah, some jerk it. wings, you know. Uh, I can jerk, uh, I do that. <laughs> you do the jerk wings for sure. Uh, but yeah, see, so it's just the thing. It's just like you're a DJ, yeah. you're on a radio, you have a platform, you have a platform, mm-hmm. dude, right? And it's just like you just, and then another DJ called you out because someone was probably trying to take you down you know like oh, uh, it's the, for sure there's somebody you know, who's uh, trying to get his spot on the radio and more than likely it was another dj yeah oh for because sure because being on the radio there's a finite amount of, sp- of positions to play yeah and it, it's not like oh it's unlimited and you can just play as much as you want like twitch mm-hmm. or whatever there's right. only so many spots to be on a radio and yep. it's prestigious so it's definitely somebody was trying to knock him down a peg. So he messed up his money in a pandemic. He messed up for, his money in a for pandemic. No reason. Yeah. So I, I, I'm still convinced, you know, I, I scanned through, I tried to get more information about it. I'm convinced he's done more money than this one song. Mm-hmm. I'm convinced he's a ton more money he's done over time. I think pretty much wow. maybe all of really? the year or whatever. Yeah, wow. it's just no way they pinched him off of this first song. I I refuse to believe that. Or yeah. he's the worst, unluckiest DJ of all time. It sounds right though, huh? Because I mean, <laughs> if you're taking you know this sort of money, it's just like this is not a one off. It's not even a ten off. You probably yeah. figured out like um, you probably have a little formula, and now you're able mm-hmm. to you know. And, and and there is a lot of new music out there now that everything yeah, is mostly digital now, right? Yeah. But like, see, the other thing too is that uh, most new artists, indies, or whatever, they understand the game, and you have to pay to mm-hmm. get your music played somewhere, mm-hmm. whether yeah. it's YouTube or <laughs> True. Facebook or right. whatever. You're gonna mm-hmm. play some kind of music so people can see you. Yeah, you're not. You have a new album and you have three followers on YouTube. No one's going to see your thing no until one. you start putting money up. So I think that that's. I don't think it was a, a question of the person who put the money up uh, ratted him out or whatever. I don't think that was the question of that. It was I a think DJ. it was another DJ. It was a Absolutely. DJ who ratted him out. He, people, he, people don't appreciate how cutthroat it is DJing and you have just a little bit of success. Just a, just a little bit of success like that and yeah. everybody's gunning for you to take your spot or whatever because it's, it's only in so many spots for you to DJ in. Right. And so... You gotta, you gotta watch your back, cross your T's, that's your eyes. You gotta be mm-hmm. careful. And that's why you have to have like a little Yeah, you know, but but you know, um he as a DJ on a very popular radio station, you know, and also mm-hmm. DJing for a very popular artist as well, he screwed up all of his bags. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all of his bags are screwed up. He now doesn't he doesn't even have the ability to DJ on a radio station. Obviously, nah. he's not DJing anywhere because he ain't doing any clubs. This is right, no clubs you know, open. And now this artist that he was DJing for may say, dude, you know what? I can't be associated with you. That's another factor. I don't I don't know if he's got fired from that or whatever. Right. But you know, he can't you're not touring right now, so the, the, I mean he he there's no way for him to make money the way he was doing like it, if you're at a lower level you're in your house whatever to lose this is not a big deal to be on the radio and to be a touring dj <laughs> this is a colossal setback for your career he, he, he may be part of like uh this is harold heath who who created the book about like the 99 percent of djs <laughs> who are just small djs he may become yeah. part of the small dj like you know sort of realm yeah but uh this is not good this is not Trust good me, for him, this you know. This is not good. This is not good. I want to talk about this last piece here, Joe Budden, because, okay, so my Wednesday video is going to, like, talk about mm. this. And, um, you know, say what you want to about Joe Budden, right? But mm-hmm. he is a giant in the podcasting space. Yeah. And he always seems to be, he's the rubber band man, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, someone may, you know, he, he always know he knows what he's worth and he does whatever he can to make sure that he receives that and that people around him, his team is also receiving mm-hmm. that as well. So, you know, there are a lot of people who talk like, you know, trash on him, you know, they, they just sort of do all this sort of stuff, right? 
But again, yeah. you know, it's just like he always seems to I, I don't even want to say bounce back either, but because, you know, right now the podcasting industry is starting to feel like the music industry. Yeah, it's a, it's you know, a bit oversaturated. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Rogan upended everything by going to Spotify. Spotify is trying to make a platform now, and Joe Rogan, I mean Joe Buttons, was a, firmly against going to Spotify. He put mm-hmm. his he put his foot down. He said, "We're not going there. It's not mm-hmm. beneficial to right. us." Mm-hmm. And he's been he's been against it from the beginning. And Spotify has been paying people to go there. They're desperate to have major artists or major, you know, people do the podcast on Spotify. And so for him to say, like, we're not going to go there. We're going to stay on YouTube. We're going to stay doing what we're doing right now and continue to try and make money this way. Mm-hmm. I commend him for it. Uh, I want to see what his vision is going to be for how he's going to make this pay off for him because everybody's feeling the pinch now. You're If you are just uh, podcasting, and you don't have any other way to reach the new art, new people, new mm-hmm. fans, whatever. And you're, you're kind of stagnant. You're in trouble because you know your numbers could be high, but no one's really listening to you. Or you know, what I'm saying like people just kind of download, but it's just sitting on their phones or whatever. And you know, a lot of people have like I'm subscribed to like 10 or 15 podcasts. Mm. I probably listen to two of them. <laughs> yeah. Any given time that I have time for. So like, you know, it counts as a download and a play, but like mm. if they had an ad on there, I'm never going to listen to it or, you know, use their whatever they're, they're promoting. I'm not going to hear about it. Easy and, to blow through ads too on the podcast. Yeah. It's easy yeah. to skip forward. Like there's no right. way to make you have to listen to it. Like uh, on YouTube, you have to listen to it and Spotify. If they have an ad on Spotify, you have to listen on to the free version. And, exactly. Yeah. The Spotify is just mm. another Spotify commercial, but like you still in the free version, you have to listen to what they're telling you right. on your regular podcast. Like it, it's very easy to skip forward. So, you know, it, it's a risky people have been successful at it. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. Like I, I like, I like Mark Marin's podcast. Mm. Uh, he, he's been around like WTF podcast has been around for a while. Right. I listen to Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like nerdy type podcasts and business yeah. related podcasts and mm-hmm. politics and that kind of stuff. So yeah. like, I'm definitely on it on that end, but you know, I got tired of the gossipy, let's be mad at whatever person thing happened. Yeah. Like, I don't, the media takeouts and I, mm-hmm. I got tired of that. So I just tuned that out completely. And Joe Rogan is in that space. Mm-hmm. He's in the hit, uh, the love and hip hop space. He's in the drama space. No, real Joe, uh, Joe Rogan or Joe Budden? Joe Budden, sorry, Joe um, Budden. I'm, I'm mixed yeah. with the Joes, but well, you know what? I mean, yes and no, right? So you know, yeah. when he was on, when Joe, when Joe Budden was on Spotify, he had the number one podcast on Spotify in 2019, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he had a relationship with them. They, yeah, they, he, um. Like yeah, and then when he was like, okay, when the contract was up and they had to renegotiate, he was basically like, okay, listen, we need to read this up because I'm the number one podcast mm-hmm. now. And they were like, hey, you know what? Well, we, we're going to like give Joe Joe Rogan a um, hundred mil or whatever it was. <laughs> and, you it's know, it's a couple hey, zeros, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a couple commas, it's a couple zeros, right? So it's just yeah, like, it was hey, a you lot. know, I'm out of here, right? So it's just like, okay, but, um, he still has the ability to, he does have a fan base. He mm-hmm. does have a following. Um, his, I, I think with his content, I think um, his content isn't necessary. It's all, it's a lot about hip hop. It's a lot about industry stuff. Um, yeah. And, you know, he, he knows like his way around topics um, yeah, you know he's he's very good talking. I'll he's give it very to good talking, you know, and um, and and now with this sort of partnership, it's not really a deal. It's a partnership with Patreon, um, mm-hmm. and also he, you know, they're bringing him on as an advisor too. So he's going to be like head of creator equity there too. So that's going to be pretty yeah. interesting. And I, I think that Patreon is trying to get into the space so that uh 
podcasters can go and use Patreon because Patreon, they had a, a lull where they were losing a lot of money, mm-hmm. and and uh, they lost because they had some issues with some some of the people that are on there, right? And they made this ruling where we can judge what your content is if you did something off platform, mm-hmm. and they kicked a couple uh, people that were very huge. Uh, uh, podcasters or whatever really? off the platform <laughs> because uh, one of them said something racist or whatever, but it didn't do it on Patreon or YouTube. It was somewhere mm. else. Oh, really? and and so they Patreon decided, and they, they, Patreon had a relationship with this person, and Patreon decided, you know what, we're going to kick you off of our platform, wow. and we're going to keep all the money that you earn from it too. Mm-hmm. And the guy, his argument was, well, this wasn't on Patreon. It didn't affect you guys. And it doesn't hurt your brand, but you guys kicked us off anyway. So like there was there was a lull where Patreon was bleeding subscribers because free speech advocates and a lot of people right. were like, well, we don't like where this is going. If you're mm-hmm. going to kick somebody off for something they did off of your own platform, mm-hmm. this is a scary space to be in. Right. And so I think Patreon is trying to make their way back into that that field of and they bringing need a, in new right. customers. Okay, okay, I and they need now. somebody mm-hmm. like a Joe Budden or whatever right. mm-hmm. to kind of to get people excited about using Patreon again. Right. And okay. so this looks like, in my per, in perception about what's happening, this looks like what they're trying to do right now. So you know, we'll see how it pays off right now. Patreon has uh, competition from Subscribestar. Uh, you know, you have your, your pay cash app, you have a lot of other stuff where people are they're starting to use now before to, right it was just patreon right they're on an island by themselves which takes 15 percent of what you do which is not yeah. bad right i mean it's 15 percent. i mean like if you think about like a spotify they're taking basically 99 percent, right yeah they're taking a chunk of it you but know, like so, patreon has a lot more competition than they did when they started yeah. a couple years ago mm-hmm. they may and, be the first so, to go ipo though yeah, and, and I think it depends on if they're not bought how their how their platforms going out. If they right. if it's getting stronger, mm-hmm. more people are going back. If they're if they're coming back, then I think Patreon could be in a good spot, and this could be a thing where you know they can you know make it more integrated into the podcast and this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Because right now, you know, you still have to leave whatever you're doing and go to Patreon and subscribe there. And then go back to whatever. And then they just take it out of your monthly, whatever. Every month they take right. some money out of your thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and 15%. then, you know, you can pay different tiers or whatever. So, like, mm-hmm. the system is good, but I think they're probably going to rework it. And it, it's they have issues because they have competition that they didn't have before. I think that that's the biggest issue that they had before is that yeah. there's new people who are creating this Patreon type thing in the in the market space and mm-hmm. i don't know if joe budden alone can do it they're they're gonna need some more help and you know i think that's why they're trying to get him to get these other guys on there you know, I, I mean ti's and some other people right i also right exactly you know so it's just like hey you know maybe he can bring on some of these um minority podcasters right um mm, it's, a possibility. it's a possibility you know because I think people, I think industries are starting to realize that, you know, minorities in terms of the creative space, they have a lot to offer. We, we have a lot of culture when it comes to this sort of stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. We, uh, we sort of set the stage for things like fashion and music and a whole bunch of other things. I I, I mean, as a tech person, I kind of wish that, you know, when you have, when you talk about things like clubhouse and also like Patreon and things like that, it's just like, yeah. why hasn't like some of these sort of, you know, these people who are, we consider like in that black excellence sort of like sphere, Mm -hmm. you know, banded together and said, you know what, we have the money, we have the resources to create platforms like clubhouse platforms, Mm -hmm. like Patreon platforms, like Twitter, platforms like facebook you know Mm -hmm. because clubhouse even though it's really you know pushed and you know being driven by you know minorities it's not Mm -hmm. owned by a minority you know i don't even know if there are any minorities 
at the table. But yeah, I, I think Patreon is like, you know what? We need someone at the table who can mm-hmm. speak to that community, who can then bring that community to us. But YouTube also have their join button and it does sort of the same thing. It, it's a similar concept. And this is right. where it came from because of Patreon. Right. And it's, they have competition. That's the, I think that's, I keep stressing that. Yeah. It's not going to be, it's not going to be easy sledding like it was before. It's not going to be easy. You know, yeah, it's not so going to be easy, but I will I'm say this though, right? Goes. I will say this, you know, I, again, you know, when he left Spotify and mm-hmm. he left Spotify because Spotify didn't want to pay him what he was, what he thought he was worth, you know? So if mm-hmm. that's the case, you own your IP, you got to bounce. Right. And then yeah. once that happened, you know, just all of Twitter, all of YouTube just blew up saying like, you know, he's done blah, 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 blah. And yeah. you know, that's not even the case. Now, the reason why I'm sort of <laughs> defending him is because mm-hmm. He's from Jersey City. I'm from Jersey City. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm always down for Jersey people. You know, Jersey people, you you know, we have we have our thing, you know. So Mm -hmm. I'm always down for Jersey people. Jersey people, we have our attitudes. We have our, Mm -hmm. you know, we have our thing, you know. But again, and sometimes it's messy, but, you know. And, and people were trying to get into like his whole personal thing. It's just like, I don't care about people's personal thing. You know, I mean, that's yeah, could, what they're dealing with personally. That's what they're dealing with. Pers- I have nothing to do with that. What is he doing? That, that's a value. Said, like, loving hip hop and that kind of stuff. It yeah. brought that energy to him. Right. And so he, he's, he can't get away from drama, even though right. if there mm-hmm. is, it shouldn't be any drama. Mm-hmm. This is, this is strictly busy. like, where is Joe Rogan's fans? Like, Oh my God, I can't believe Joe Rogan sold out. Everybody's like, right. Oh, he's getting the money. He's moving Spotify. Cause we're <laughs> going to Spotify bad. now. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's just cool. But like he, he has that energy about the, the negativity from, drama i would say joe Mm -hmm. joe budden has that around him and some of it's brought in by himself yeah and some of it's just circumstances of whatever Mm -hmm. yeah out of his hands and and so like you know he's he's beefing with rappers and all this other stuff all the time and it it just (laughs) it adds to whatever he does is gonna have scrutiny because i when you when you sent me the the thing to look at the uh the youtube video mm-hmm. i immediately went i was listening to it i immediately went down to the comment section and they were ripping him in there ripping him and i couldn't believe one. it i'm like mm-hmm. why why is this it's easy this financial situation affect their enjoyment of the right. show but i also think that you know his co-hosts they've been with him for like years so yeah. how can you even think that these two, uh, these two, his two co-hosts who have been with him for years are not getting paid what they feel like they're worth? It's just absolute. Mm-hmm. It's, it's ridiculous on his face to say that they these two co-hosts aren't getting paid. It's just like, oh, but these two guys who probably have a lot of street knowledge, you know, just like, yeah. hey, you know what? I'm going to stay with him and not get paid what I'm worth. That's not going to happen. That's not happening. You know, those guys Mm -hmm. are there. They add to the show. They add to the platform. And again, like you said, things can be a little messy when it comes to sort of these, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. personalities that are out there. Um, (laughs) It's part of his charm, though. It is. is. Yeah, it's it's definitely, it it could get messy. But um, I don't know. I just, and the other thing is like you, you hit something really on the head it's just like this is patreon right so we don't know exactly what all of this means and what how all of this is we don't know because this is this is not a large platform yet Mm -hmm. so we will see platform and Mm -hmm. i think that him saying that we're going to charge people to listen to the show it kind of rubbed people the wrong way Mm. And he said the different exclusive tiers. episodes, though. Yeah, different yeah. Tiers, yeah. the basic stuff you can still see, right? But I think it, it people are they've been used to free, mm-hmm. and so when you're like, okay, okay, everybody, we're gonna do a little bit free, but we're gonna also mm-hmm. gotta pay. Uh, people felt kind of funny about that. I think yeah. that was part of the ire about what was happening here. Now, I do think that mm-hmm. there are gonna be a lot of people who go check it out because 
a lot of people who are doing podcasts do mm-hmm. the same thing. Yeah. They have a tier where they, they talk directly to their fans and they, you know, mm-hmm. they do the, the different types of tiers, whether, whether it's on Patreon or whatever else, there's just different types of things that they do to, to make it special to the right. people that listen to their show. Exactly. exactly. And, and so like, it's not, it's not something out of the ordinary. It's not unusual. He's just following the business model that's been set for everybody else in the space. I think that with him, because he has this drama thing around him, it, Bad drama. At it, it's, it's a thing. Like mm. the, I've been following Joe Biden since pump it up, man. And that guy's problems all the way. Pump it up. Been. Yeah. He's, that was he's always had problems and not getting along with others. Like it's always been an issue. And you know, someone's sometimes it's warranted and sometimes mm. it's not. So, you know I what? Know. I, li- I do like him though. I I think he's a good. He's really good at his podcast. Yeah, he's really good at that. Well, you know, we'll see what happens. But listen, this is the that's the last bit of information I have, um, and that is it. So, thanks for checking out the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. What's up? I'm DJ Keo. Thank you for watching. We'll be back next week. That's what's up. Peace. Peace.